The animal kingdom is abundant in unique species, bringing you all facts about the dangerous, cute, smart, wild and extinct animals. On You Curious. Discover more. No more. Let's begin with the 10 most dangerous animals in the world. The animal kingdom is home to some of the deadliest creatures on the planet. You do not want to wind up on the wrong side of these killing machines. Welcome to You Curious, and today we are counting down the top 10 most dangerous predators on Earth. Polar bears. I know what you're thinking. Polar bears. They're cute, right? Maybe when they're small. Yes, but then they turn into adults. They grow to eight feet tall and they become one of nature's most refined killing machines, but have been known in the past to drag whales weighing up to a ton onto dry land so that they can feed. Not only are they strong, but their thick white fur provides them with natural camouflage, making them incredibly hard to spot against the Arctic background. Nine. The Black Mamba. There are many different types of snakes in the world, many of them venomous, but of those, the most deadly is the Black Mamba from Southeast Africa. Its bite contains lethal neurotoxins, which up until the fairly recent development of antivenoms had a mortality rate of 100%. Not only is it venomous too, but incredibly fast, perhaps even the fastest snake on Earth, reaching speeds of up to 20 kilometers an hour, which it uses to pursue its prey, including small bush babies and even birds. Eight, gray wolves. Gray wolves are among the most intelligent pack hunters in the world. These wolves hunt in packs and their territory can grow as large as 1,200 square miles. And it's been shown that they're target animals that are too young, too weak or too old to properly defend themselves. The grey wolf is also considered an endangered species due to hunting over the years as it's perceived by many as a threat to other local wildlife as well as to humans. 7. Siberian Tigers it's an incredible animal, the largest big cat in the world, yet incredibly fast. Their senses are carefully attuned to allow them to track and to hunt their prey, and they're physically powerful enough to hold their own in fights with large animals, including adult bears, and tend to have quite a lot of body fat, which the tigers need to maintain energy and warmth in their natural cold climate. 6. Box Jellyfish Looking down into the sea now, we find a slightly unassuming predator, the box jellyfish. While most jellyfish have a tendency to drift aimlessly through the ocean, box jellyfish have been shown to have intentional motion. This means they can intentionally pursue their prey, which includes zooplankton and other small fish. The box jelly's most dangerous quality is the venom which it can deliver, which is considered to be amongst the most deadly venoms in the world. 5. African Lion now, despite being known popularly as the king of the jungle, lions don't actually live in jungles. They live on the open plains. They live and hunt in groups called prides on the open African plains. The female lions tend to do most of the hunting, while the males will stay home with their young. African lions have been known to hunt solo if they're in desperate need of food and have also been shown to steal kills from other animals, including hyenas and wild dogs. Four. The Great White Shark The Great White Shark is among the most powerful predators in the world. Slick, fast, strong and completely lethal, the Great White Shark is such a famous predator that it served as the basis for the book and then the movie, Jaws. Typically, a Great White Shark will begin its kill by sinking its teeth into its prey and then it will wait until the animal is weakened from blood loss and then move in for a relatively unchallenged kill. They can hear incredibly low frequencies that humans can't, they can see colours that we can't even perceive, and they can smell blood in the water from a distance of over three miles. 3. The Orca Orcas are what's known as an apex predator. This means that they're at the very top of their food chain. They have absolutely no natural predators, except humans. They have quite a broad diet, including sea lions, octopuses, and even the last entry on our list, sharks. There's a very good reason that the orca has become known as the killer whale. It's an effective hunter who uses its black and white colouring as a form of camouflage, masking its exact shape and size from any prey who might be trying to escape it. 2. Eagles The most efficient predator in the air is the eagle. It's got incredibly powerful eyesight, so it can find a rabbit from up to 3 kilometres away. 
To put this in perspective, this would be like standing on the 10th storey of a building, looking down at the ground and being able to spot an ant walking along the pavement. Not only that, but eagles can grow wingspans of up to two and a half metres, yet they only weigh about eight kilos. This is because, like most birds, they have completely hollow bones, making them incredibly efficient flying and hunting machines. 1. Brazilian Wandering Spider There are hundreds of different types of venomous spiders, but the most venomous all the way from South America, we find the Brazilian wandering spider. Its venom is as strong as any snakes and can lead to loss of muscle control, breathing problems and eventually respiratory paralysis, as well as intense pain. As you might guess from the name, they tend not to hide on a web in a dark corner. They love to wander around and they can turn up in all sorts of places, log piles, cars and bunches of bananas. In fact, they do this so often they've also become known as banana spiders. 10 cute animals that are actually deadly. Animals that look harmless, but can be deadly. Just like how we humans have diverse personalities, animals too have distinct characteristics and are often not what they appear to be. They may look cute and adorable at first glance, but what hides beneath is quite different. Even those that appear relatively harmless can be dangerous. It could be something as simple as a need to protect itself, anger due to a lack of food, or a fight for a mate. They can bite and attack when you'd least expect it. Are you fascinated by the unique and mysterious? Are you constantly looking to amass information and build your knowledge base? Subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on our latest videos. Are you curious? Discover more, know more. Let's watch some videos of animals that look seemingly mild, but could turn out to be vicious if provoked. 1. Tasmanian Devil As the name suggests, this animal originates from Tasmania, an island off Australia's coast. Cute but feisty, the Tasmanian Devil has earned the name Devil because of its hot-tempered personality. This marsupial can literally burst into a fit of rage. It is known to bare its teeth pounce menacingly and give out spine-curling growls. About 30 inches in length and 26 kilograms in weight, it is not a very big animal and resembles a baby bear. But its large head, sharp teeth and muscular jaw give it the advantage of a powerful bite that can wound and kill. Having said this, the Tasmanian Devil is aggressive only when threatened or frightened. Interesting, isn't it? Two. Dingoes. Dingo is a wild dog found in abundance in Australia. It is lean with a bushy tail and almond color eyes, very much like a wolf or a fox. Quite beautiful to look at, dingoes were once domesticated pets of the aboriginals who kept them close to their bodies to remain warm at night. They are timid animals and can be pretty friendly. But if they feel threatened, they are unpredictable and known to attack quite violently. Their target is mostly young children among humans and livestock and young cattle and animals. Changed your mind about having a dingo as a pet, haven't you? 3. Panda Bears The adorable panda has been a sign of love, whether it's in the form of a stuffed toy or a cartoon character in an animated film. But as timid as it appears in Kung Fu Panda, the giant panda in real life can be dangerous. Not only does it have a strong grip, but also a bite powerful enough to chew through a human leg. But don't fret, most of the time panda bears are relaxed and happy eating bamboo. They only tend to get aggressive when threatened, so make sure you don't do anything to make them angry. 4. Hedgehogs Hedgehogs and deadly. Yes, quite true. I'm sure that at some point or another, either you have had a hedgehog as a pet, or know of someone who has. And now you are wondering how it could be dangerous. After all, hedgehogs are cute and lovely to hold. But what most people don't know is that hedgehogs have spikes that can harm the human skin or anything else that the animal perceives as a threat. When a hedgehog feels safe, the spikes lie flat. That is when you can pick it up and pet it. But the moment it feels a sense of danger, the spikes rise up vertically and can prove dangerous and poisonous. This is interesting because the spikes by themselves are not poisonous. Hedgehogs are immune to certain poisonous plants. 
but when they eat these plants, they produce frothy saliva in their mouth. They then lick their bodies with the saliva, spreading poison all over the spikes. It is this poison that can then be deadly for its predators. Hmm, an odd way to protect yourself, isn't it? Five, swans. Swans have always been a symbol of love, friendship, and fairy tales. They are known for their grace and delicacy. Even beautiful ballets have been named after swans. But when swans get angry or feel threatened, they can attack you viciously. This happens mostly when their loved ones or babies, known as cygnets, are in danger. They raise their wings, make all kinds of noises, from hissing to snorting to grunting, and finally flap their wings so hard that you are forced to walk away. As a matter of fact, their flapping is so violent that it can actually break a human arm. So beware, the next time you are at the lake feeding breadcrumbs to swans, be nice, and whatever you do, don't mess with the cygnets. 6. Polar Bears As cute and huggable as a polar bear. How many times have we said that? But now think again. Polar bears may be adorable, but they are ultimately bears. Large carnivores, powerful predators, and prone to attacking humans and property. Having said that, normally, polar bears are not territorial and cautious in their encounters. They would rather move away than fight. Moreover, they don't fear humans and tend to get comfortable with them. But it is this very behavior that can prove to be risky. Because if they feel threatened, they can get aggressive. Delightful, but deadly, huh? 7. Slow Loris A slow loris has big, innocent eyes and soft fur making you want to hold it, pet it, or even cuddle it. But if approached in the wild, the slow loris is anything but lovable. Though it appears harmless, it is one of the most poisonous mammals that we know of. It secretes venom from the sides of its elbows, which enters its mouth when it grooms itself. Used as a means of defense, the venom can cause horrible rashes and illnesses, or anaphylactic shock leading to death in worst case scenarios. Many of the attributes of a slow loris resemble that of a snake. The hissing sound it makes, its bite, its markings, its sinuous moves, and even the way it raises its arms above its head when threatened. Hence, it is said that a slow loris has evolved into mimicking a venomous snake. 8. Pufferfish A fully expanded pufferfish is endearing. But don't be fooled by its good looks. In fact, it is one of the most poisonous vertebrate known to mankind. It contains a substance called tetradoxin, which not only makes them taste unpleasant to other fish, but is also fatal. More than 1,200 times deadlier than cyanide poison, the toxin in one pufferfish can kill 30 adults. It is recommended that one should use thick gloves while fishing. It will help prevent the poison from seeping into you or getting bitten when removing the hook. The poison of a pufferfish can kill you by paralyzing the diaphragm and suffocating you. Sadly, there is no antidote for this poison, so make sure you don't catch a pufferfish the next time you go fishing. 9. Moose When you think of a moose, you think of a dumb, smiling animal resembling a deer. But don't get carried away with its innocent expression. It is perhaps one of the most dangerous animals that you are likely to encounter. Typically, they don't care about humans, but if threatened, they can get dangerous. They will charge at you and attack you. This is especially true if the moose feels that its young calf is in danger. 10. Giant Anteater Even though it is large in size, anteaters eat only ants and termites. Besides that, they have bad eyesight, bad hearing, and no teeth. Yet, they are as dangerous as can be. Unbelievable, but true. Normally, anteaters are not aggressive, but they can be intimidating when threatened. Their massive size, together with their sharp and powerful claws, make them dangerous. If they sense danger, they will stand on their hind legs and use their tail to balance. The claw, which is four inches long, becomes a deadly weapon and can even kill a human. The giant anteater is even an enemy to animals like jaguars and pumas. 
We hope you enjoyed this video. What if dinosaurs were alive today? Today we're going to be talking about a world where dinosaurs roamed the Earth. But don't go running for your time machines just yet because we're going to talk about a world where dinosaurs roamed the Earth today. Around 200 million years ago, the world was a very different place. Lush jungles covered the Earth's surface, volcanic eruptions littered the landscape, and dinosaurs roamed the Earth. Then about 65 million years ago, they vanished. So began a mystery that puzzled scientists for years. What caused this mysterious disappearance? Nowadays, the accepted theory for this extinction-level event was the impact of a six-mile-wide asteroid hitting the face of the Earth. Six miles! Can you imagine that? Just to put that into perspective, six miles is the same height that a commercial aeroplane flies at above the surface of the Earth. But let's ask the question, what if dinosaurs had never become extinct? The extinction of the dinosaurs left a major gap to be filled in the Earth's ecosystem. This eventually led to the rise of mammals and to the evolution of man. Scientists have long questioned whether mankind would have ever evolved if such dominant predators had still been around to compete with. So unfortunately, it looks like you probably wouldn't have been buddies with a brontosaurus or teammates with a T-Rex. It's quite possible that dinosaurs would have continued to evolve if they hadn't been wiped out by this extinction event. Does that mean that the world would be populated by intelligent speaking dinosaurs working in offices and playing in football teams? Researchers have discovered that there is an extinction event approximately every 26 million years, which means that the dinosaurs would probably have died out anyway at some point. 26 million years in the life cycle of our planet is a scarily short space of time. So yes, it's unlikely that we would have lived alongside dinosaurs if they survived extinction. If you look closer and look up into the sky, you'll see that they may already be living among us. Birds! Yes, birds are distantly related to dinosaurs despite their appearance. You see, when I said that 65 million years ago all the dinosaurs were made extinct, that's not quite accurate. One smaller feather-covered species of dinosaur managed to survive and evolved into the birds that you see around you in the world today. So, next time you're going for a stroll in the woods and you hear this lovely sound, spare a thought for their distant relatives and thank your lucky stars that you're not hearing this sound. The top 10 most intelligent animals. Humans are pretty intelligent, but we have an intelligence range, and it turns out that's true for all animals. Some animals are more intelligent than others. Welcome to You Curious, and today we're going to be looking at the top 10 smartest animals on Earth. Coming in at number 10, it's the squirrel. They're experts at adapting to their environments, they've got great memories, and they're very quick learners, simply through observation. They can remember patterns, they can remember locations, and they can retain in their minds exactly how to get back to a place that they visited only once. Coming in at number 9, it's the dog. Well, specifically, the Border Collie. Border Collies appear to be the smartest breed of dog. They're useful for herding sheep, they've got great stamina, but they do need to be kept busy. They have the brain capacity of an average two-year-old human child. They learn fast, they respond to commands, and they can identify over a million types of scent. At number eight, it's the African Grey Parrot. These parrots can be trained to say full sentences and mimic human speech and even telephones. They can say more than a hundred words and are the world's most intelligent bird. And number seven is pigs. Their memory lasts for around three years. They've got a great sense of direction and they can learn to play. They can learn a symbolic language and they've displayed complex social behaviors similar to humans. At number six, the rat. Rats are small and they're resourceful. They're adaptable, they've got great memories, which they use to remember routes to food and to good hiding places. If you name a rat, it will learn to respond to that name. The key reason that rats so often get used in laboratory studies is precisely because of their intelligence. At number five, it's the orangutan. The orangutan is one of the most intelligent primate species. They can communicate with people using symbols and sounds, and they can even communicate using sign language. They've been shown to build nests and they can even use tools. When climbing around through forest canopies, they've been shown to choose branches they know can support their weight. At number four, it's the crow. They've been shown to put nuts on the ground, on the road, 
wait for a car to run over it and crack it open, and then collect the insides. That's really clever. They've also got the reasoning ability of a human seven-year-old child. They're the only non-primate to use tools using sticks and hooks to get food out of branches and all nooks and crannies. At number three, the elephant. Elephants have an incredibly long memory, remembering things and people for up to 50 years, and they can even show empathy towards each other. Elephants use physical contact to comfort their relatives. At number two, it's the bottlenose dolphin. They have the biggest brain of any animal of the same size, averaging at about three and a half pounds. They can learn very quickly. Dolphins have been known to work with fishermen in the past. They can drive fish into nets, and in return, the fishermen will throw them some of their catch. Way to go, dolphins. Coming in at number one, drum roll please. Yes, you might have guessed it, it's the chimpanzee, the smartest ape of all. They have genes that are approximately 98% identical to that of human beings. The chimpanzee, which is native to Africa, has been shown to outwit human beings and have better short-term memories, as shown in a study in 2013. So there we go, the 10 smartest animals in the world, not including human beings, of course. The science of cuteness with top five cutest animals. When you look at pictures of adorable little puppies and kittens, it can be hard to resist the urge to just go, oh, they're just so cute. That's a pretty common reaction. Have you ever wondered what it is about these animals that makes them so cute? And what's happening in our minds when we perceive something as cute? There must be some kind of explanation, right? Well, today we're going to be looking at the science of cuteness and the top five cutest animals. What is cuteness? Well, the word cute is actually defined as being attractive in a pretty and endearing way. So, let's start by having a look at this picture. Look at the doggy. That's right, stare at his face. Can you feel that? That warm, tight feeling in the chest, that uncontrollable urge to emit high-pitched noise, that build of excitement and a sudden wanting to squeeze something really tightly. So why does seeing something cute make us act this way? What is it about babies and puppies and kittens, little baby bears, little baby giraffes, baby tigers, baby lions? What is it about all these baby animals that makes us turn into a soppy mess? Scientist Conrad Lorenz studied animal behaviour and in the 1940s he came up with a theory called Kinshinshima. Kinshinshima is a word which describes all those features when put together make an animal or an infant human cute. Now, these features can include a large round head, big eyes, chubby cheeks, a large forehead, small chin, a button nose, and a soft exterior like fur. So when we see an animal that has all these Kinshinshima traits, we see it as cute. The answers can be found in evolutionary biology. The key to our survival has always been evolution and adaptation. Our goal as a species is to survive and to pass on our genes. The way that we pass on our genes is by having babies. But these babies need us as adults to protect them and look after them. So if we do find a young animal cute, we're much more inclined to try and protect it from harm and help it survive. Our brains even make us enjoy looking at cute things by rewarding us with a hit of dopamine, a chemical that makes us feel intensely happy. Have you ever heard someone say, oh, it's so cute, I could just eat it? This is a phenomenon known as dimorphous expression, which is when you express something slightly different to what you're actually feeling. But why can't we just smile and look happy when we're happy? Why does this dimorphous expression happen in the first place? Well, it seems like it's a form of mechanism that the body starts to employ in order to regulate its emotions. These expressions are easier to recover from, in a way, than a really exaggerated happy expression. So next time you get the feeling you want to nibble on a baby's cheeks, or cry at a wedding, or laugh because you're nervous, know that it's perfectly normal, and actually quite helpful to deal with strong emotions in just this way. And the top five cutest animals in the world? At number one, it's gotta be kittens. 
I grew up with cats and I love them. At number two, it's puppies. It's a classic, but there's a very good reason. At number three, I'm going to go with baby pandas. Just look at them. Then at number four, I'm going to go with baby elephants. And finally, at number five, otters. Doesn't matter if they're babies or adults, they're just cute. Why don't you let us know what you think are the five cutest animals in the world? 10 animals that can do unusual things. Can you imagine a new and different colour? Defying gravity? Regenerating a limb? How about becoming immortal? Does it sound like we're asking you to develop superpowers? While it may seem extraordinary to us, these are just a few unusual things that some animals are actually capable of doing. From shape-shifting to living forever, the animal kingdom seems to have many creative abilities that we can can only wish for. In this video, we will explore the astonishing and amazing talents of a wide range of creatures, from common birds to octopuses to goats. You curious? Chameleon. While most know that chameleons can change colour, they've got more tricks up their sleeves than that. A lesser known fact is that the eyes of a chameleon provide 360 degree vision. The human visual field only covers 50 to 60 degrees horizontally and 50 to 70 degrees vertically. Chameleons have a unique eye anatomy which lets them rotate their eyes with a higher degree of freedom. Another fascinating aspect is their ability to switch between monocular and binocular vision. This allows them to view two separate objects with each eye independently or to focus both eyes on one object, which is what we do. Jellyfish for the Turritopsis nutricula, more commonly known as the immortal jellyfish, immortality is just a part of life. When the jellyfish reaches its adult form of 4.5 millimeters and has reproduced, it starts reverting to its early stages of life. So instead of dying, it simply transforms back to how it started life by shrinking its body, retracting its tentacles and allowing itself to sink to the bottom of the ocean floor. Once this happens, the jellyfish is able to start the cycle of life all over again without dying. And this cycle occurs more than once. Octopus. Shape-shifting might sound like an interesting, although made-up concept from a sci-fi or superhero movie, but there is an incredible animal that exists today which has the ability to mimic the shape of another animal. The Mimic Octopus. It can physically rearrange itself to appear like a completely different animal. Not just that, but the Mimic Octopus also gets into character by taking on the attributes of the animal it's impersonating. Some of its well-known impersonators include jellyfish, lionfish and even sea snakes. It's a shame that they don't have Oscars underwater or this guy would have definitely swept the award. Alpine Goat we all know that birds have the ability to defy gravity because they have wings. Well, what about an animal without wings that defies gravity? Meet the alpine ibex goat. It has the incredible ability to run up hills that are almost perfectly vertical. Not just that, they can also hold their balance on the tiniest of ledges. With the power to jump to a height of two meters while galloping upwards, they manage to escape their predators almost effortlessly. Dolphins. In our fast-paced lives where 24 hours never seems to be enough, wouldn't it be great if you never had to sleep? Imagine all the things you could do with those eight hours of snooze time. Dolphins are one of the few marine mammals that can sleep with half their brains still working. This is called unihemispheric slow wave sleep. It allows the sleeping half of the brain to recover from daily happenings and fuse new memories while the other waking hemisphere is still active. Birds. Try to imagine a different colour. It's impossible, isn't it? Even if you did think of one, it's just a combination of the colours that you're already familiar with. That's not the case for birds. All birds have the interesting ability to see colours that are invisible to the human eye. This is because of the extra colour cones in their retina, which are extremely sensitive to the ultraviolet range of colours. Fascinating, isn't it? Dogs. Storms are not the only thing the animal kingdom can warn us of. Dogs have been known to alert us about health problems much before we recognise the symptoms in ourselves. With their incredible sense of smell, dogs can actually be trained to sniff out diseases like cancer. This is a truly phenomenal ability that has the potential to save multiple lives by early diagnosis and treatment. Ah, dogs. They are man's best friend indeed. Scorpions. What if you could glow in the dark? You would need no torch or flashlight if the lights went off. For scorpions, this is no big deal. 
When they are exposed to ultraviolet light or the strong light of the full moon, they glow. No one knows why, but some studies theorize that this is a way for them to spot other scorpions during the night when they're out on the hunt. It's also been suggested that they act in the same manner as some deep sea creatures by luring prey towards them with their bioluminescence. Axolotl. When humans lose a limb or an organ, we turn to medical science in hopes of getting prosthetics or organ donations. Not this guy. The axolotl, a curious looking amphibian, has the remarkable ability to regenerate, encoded into its immune system. Immune cells called macrophages assist the axolotl in regenerating parts of its body within a matter of time. Blue whales. If you were to shout at the top of your lungs, the maximum decibel you'd reach would be somewhere around 90. As the largest creature known to man, it's not a surprise that the blue whale is able to produce the loudest sound. The low frequency vocalization of the blue whale can reach up to 188 decibels. This is much louder than a jet plane, which peaks at 140 decibels. The blue whale sound is much louder than our threshold of pain, which peaks at 130 decibels. The sound is so loud that it can be heard from as far as 800 kilometers. That's 500 miles. The top 10 animals in danger of extinction. Our planet is home to a vast multitude of species that have been thriving in its flora and fauna since time immemorial. As humans, we may think we're in charge, but in fact, mankind is strangely insignificant in the grand scheme of the Earth. Indeed, the world's 7.6 billion people represent just 0.01% of all living things. Yet, since the dawn of civilization, humanity has caused the loss of a staggering 83% of all wild mammals and 50% of all plant life. Although extinctions are nothing new and have been happening since life began on Earth, our presence on this planet has certainly helped speed up the process, be it climate change, destruction of natural habitats, interbreeding of animals, or simply hunting for food, humans have been responsible for the extinction of much of this planet's fauna, with more in danger of extinction. So, which are some of these creatures? And how close are they to being completely wiped out forever from the face of this planet? You curious? Discover more. No more. Southern Rockhopper Penguin Distinguished by spiky yellow and black feathers on their heads, blood-red eyes, a red-orange beak, and pink webbed feet, rockhoppers are among the world's smallest penguins, standing at just 20 inches tall. Although they look adorable, the population of these penguins has declined by more than 30% over the last 30 years. Rockhopper colonies on the Falkland Islands, UK, were once the largest, but commercial overfishing, pollution and oil spills have cut the penguins' numbers dramatically. These activities have not only warmed the ocean around their habitats, but have also drastically reduced their food source. Currently, rockhoppers are classified as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN. Hawksbill Turtle Sporting unique beak-like mouths, beautiful amber-coloured pattern shells, and a unique V-shaped lower jaw that gives it a hawk-like appearance, hawksbill turtles roam throughout the tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. With a diet comprising mainly of coral reef sponges, the loss of coral reef habitat around the world due to warming up of the oceans is a primary threat to hawksbill turtles. Another threat to the hawksbill's life is their beautiful shell. They were hunted for hundreds of years in huge numbers for the tortoise shell that was used in many types of jewellery and trinkets. Harvesting hawksbill turtles for their shell nearly drove the population to extinction. Today, IUCN classifies the hawksbill as endangered polar bear. These snowy white furballs may look cuddly, but in fact are twice the size of a tiger, guzzle through 12,325 calories a day, for which they rely almost exclusively on a diet of seals. But thanks to climate change, the Arctic is heating up faster than anywhere else, and sea ice is shrinking at 14% per decade. Even today, in the middle of the bitter, cold Arctic winter, there is about 770,000 square miles less sea ice as compared to 2010. 
Because of this, the polar bear's only food source, seals, has also reduced drastically, leading to a starving population of bears, which are fast dying out. Indeed, polar bears are considered endangered in the US and are listed as vulnerable by the IUCN because their sea ice habitat is under threat from climate change. In fact, the World Wildlife Fund, WWF, is conducting research to identify and conserve areas in which these bears feed, den and give birth in an effort to conserve their population. Dugong this one sounds like a Pokemon, doesn't it? Well, it's real, and it's in danger. Historically, dugongs, one of the four species of sea cows, have lived along almost all the coasts of the Indo-Pacific Ocean around India, East Africa, Malaysia, and Western Australia. Dugongs are important for maintaining healthy sea meadows, which are an important source of food to them and innumerable species of fish but they're suffering pressures on their coastal habitat, and in many places their numbers are plummeting. Why, you ask? Well, coastal development, industrial activities and water pollution are eating away at the very sea grass on which these flippers depend for their food. To make it worse, if dugongs do not eat their fill of sea grass, they don't mate, and baby dugongs are not born. Moreover, to add to the problem, dugongs often get accidentally entangled in fishing nets laid out for other fish and become innocent victims. The sharp fall in the dugong's population has led the IUCN to classify it as vulnerable on the red list of threatened species, Vaquita porpoise. Discovered in 1958, the Vaquita is already on the brink of extinction. This elusive porpoise roams the waters of Mexico's Gulf of California, and its population has dropped by an alarming 97% in recent years. So, what's causing the vaquita to be wiped out? The answer's pretty common – illegal fishing practices. Vaquitas share waters with the totoba fish, which are sought after for their swim bladders, believed to cure a variety of illness and diseases in Chinese medicine, and can sell for up to $8,500 per kilogram in the black market. Much like the dugong, the innocent vaquita gets entangled in the fishing nets set out for the totoba fish and drowns. Indeed, the vaquita's population as per the International Committee for the Recovery of the Vaquita, as of 2019, is only 10 in the whole world. This has led to the IUCN classifying this porpoise as critically endangered. Mexican Grey Wolf Once wandering through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas and Northern Mexico, the Mexican Grey Wolf became the most endangered species of wolf in the world when settlers moved to the southwest, bringing the livestock industry with them. Mexican grey wolves began to lose the habitat vital to their survival. In addition, hunters killed off deer, elk and many other animals that are natural prey for wolves, cutting off their sources of food. And so, with diminishing habitats and few animals to hunt, wolves began preying on livestock. This led to the US Biological Survey killing as many as 900 wolves with rifles, poison and traps between 1915 and 1925 alone, and driving them to the brink of extinction. As of 2020, only 163 Mexican grey wolves remain, leading the IUCN to classify them as endangered on the red list of threatened species, and also leading to formation of the Mexican Wolf Species Survival Plan, the MWSSP, Sayola. With its unusually long horns and white markings on the face, the Sayola is a strong symbol for biodiversity in Laos and Vietnam. But unfortunately, it was discovered in 1992, at a time when its population was already extremely threatened. Since not even a single Sayola, or Asian unicorns as they're called, exist in captivity to this day, this animal remains a bit of an enigma to us, and we can only venture a guess as to how many remain. But one thing we do know for sure is only 11 Sayolas have ever been captured alive on camera. Funnily enough, the Sayola is one of the few animals without a price on its head, since it is neither valued as a hunting prize nor in any animal black market. So, what's making it disappear? Well, besides the usual – destruction of habitat for agriculture, plantations and infrastructure – the Sayola is also an innocent casualty of snares that are set by villagers for other wild animals. With the very real possibility of only a few hundred of these animals existing today, the IUCN has listed the Sayola as critically endangered on the red list. 
Further, the WWF has been involved with the protection of the Sayola ever since its discovery, improving protection measures at the Vu Kang Nature Reserve in Vietnam, where the Sayola was first discovered, and have established two new adjacent Sayola reserves in the Tua Tien Hu and Kang Nam provinces. Amur Leopard Few animals can survive the harsh winters of Russia as well as the Amur Leopard. Thanks to its thick fur, large paws and long legs, it can carve out a home even in the thickest of snowfalls. Being at the top of the food chain, the Amur leopard might lack natural predators, but humans, the ultimate predators on Earth, still threaten the cat's existence, and have been actively poaching or illegally hunting it for the past 60 to 70 years. The Amur leopard is poached largely for its beautiful spotted fur. As of today, the Amur leopard stands classified as critically endangered by the IUCN, with about 100 leopards roaming about in the wild and about 180 in protective captivity. Further, anti-poaching brigades are deployed in all areas in which the Amur leopard prowls. To raise awareness, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, even chose the Amur leopard as one of the mascots for the 2014 Sochi Olympics. Malayan Tiger Thousands of tigers once roamed throughout the dense, forested interior of the Malaysian peninsula, but they are now mainly confined to three protected areas. Belum Temengor in the north, Taman Negara in the center, and Endau Rompin to the south. Half of the Malayan tigers which roamed the forests of the Malaysian peninsula in 2015 were wiped out by 2018. The poachers are mostly from Thailand, Vietnam and Cambodia, who feed into an illegal trade where it is believed that consuming parts of endangered animals will cure myriad diseases or improve their strength and virility. Furthermore, all of the tigers which live in protected areas descend from just 11 tigers, making them too closely related to sustain a wild population. Needless to say, this makes conservation efforts that much harder, because of which the IUCN has listed these tigers as critically endangered, and has led the Wildlife Conservation Society, the WCS, to work with governments and establish dozens of protected areas across Asia, and collaborate with scientists to breed and bolster the tiger population. Blue Whale Whales have been hunted by mankind since the medieval era, when whale fat, called blubber, was discovered to have innumerable uses, including oil, soaps, perfumes, candles and cosmetics, among others, making it increasingly valuable in the times gone by. Unfortunately, as technology, boats and hunting equipment evolved, the rate at which whales were being killed greatly increased and continued to shrink the existing whale populations, especially those of blue whales, as they were coveted by whalers for their large size and were continually hunted until near extinction. The alarming decrease of the whale population on Earth has led the IUCN to classify them as endangered on the red list of threatened species. Furthermore, blue whales are protected under both the Endangered Species Act and the Marine Mammal Protection Act, which has led organizations and companies alike to monitor whale population trends, predict whale routes, and reroute ships and vessels so that they don't collide with whales, maximize efforts to acquire scientific data from dead, stranded, and entangled blue whales, and coordinate state, federal, and international efforts to implement recovery actions. 10 signs your dog loves you. Dogs have been man's best friend for eternity. They are loyal and their love is unconditional. While it is easy for us humans to show love and affection to our furry canine friends, how do dogs communicate their feelings to us? Well, they demonstrate their affection using their unique body language. From their snubby nose to their wagging tails, the entire body plays a part in communicating their love in subtle and surprising ways. Keep watching to see how dogs display affection towards humans. Subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on our latest videos. You curious? Discover more, know more. Dogs show love with a wagging tail. The most common sign of love among canines is a wagging tail. The looser and more relaxed the dog's tail is, the happier he is with his human and surroundings. Although a tail, depending on how it is moving, communicates several different emotions, including fear and aggression, love is displayed by a really hard wag from left to right and vice versa. Almost like the entire back of the dog is moving, it is recognized not only as a sign of love, but trust as well. 
Dogs show love by following you around. You get out of bed early in the morning and you're on your way to the bathroom and you find yourself stumbling on your pooch. Your dog is following you noiselessly, perhaps a little too close for comfort. Humans and dogs have an uncanny bond, one that provides companionship and loyalty. Humans look after their pets and pets feel secure with their humans. Thus, following the human is a natural response to feeling safe for the dog. For older dogs, it is instinctive and represents a sense of love, loyalty, and devotion. Dogs don't believe that their humans need space away from them. Humans are the dog's comfort zone and hence believe it is their right to be with them all the time. Dogs show love by licking your face. Dogs licking their humans with their tongues is very much like us humans kissing. Well, maybe not with so much slobber. It is also their most obvious and instinctive way to say, I love you. Puppies lick their mothers as a show of affection and hunger, a habit which continues well into adulthood. Further, when two dogs form a strong relationship, they lick each other. This kind of grooming signifies intimacy. Thus, when the dog does the same to you, he is saying in no uncertain terms that he loves you. Dogs show love by sleeping next to you and cuddling with you. Just like wolves who sleep in packs curled up together, dogs too are habituated to lie next to their loved ones. For dogs, their pack consists of their human family, which makes it instinctive for them to sleep next to them or cuddle with them. Cuddling helps to strengthen the bond between dogs and their humans. Also, if your dog snuggles up to you while making soft sighing sounds, it means he is safe and comfortable by your side. It epitomizes the love dogs wish to share with you. Dogs show they care for you by watching over you when you're sick or feeling sad. Remember the time you were sick in bed with a nasty flu and your dog never left your side for even a minute? Dogs are your protectors and will instinctively sense your discomfort or illness. Just like wolves who rely on their pack to be cared for, dogs too look after their own pack, which is us humans. They will lick your wounds, literally and figuratively, fuss over you and care for you, thereby showing love and affection, just as they would in the wild with their packs. Dogs are also very intuitive about their human's emotions. They can sense sadness, unhappiness, and anxiety, and will respond to you in different ways to help lift your mood. Their behavior will soften. They will be extra attentive towards you and find a way to calm you down. They will lie down next to you, snuggle with you, rest their head on you, telling you that everything will be all right. Sigh. What can be more precious than this? Dogs lean on you to show you their love. You are busy cooking or running between chores, and your favorite pooch is following you and resting against you every time you stop. Small dogs may come in the way, and well, big dogs can be a problem if they're continuously leaning on you. When dogs lean against you, they are putting their entire weight forward. It is their way of showing love and also saying that they trust you implicitly. This kind of an affectionate lean also conveys that the dog is relaxed and calm. Dogs will gaze deep into your eyes to convey their affection. When dogs are gazing into your eyes, they are bonding with you. Just like with us humans, it's an intimate act. Some dogs just want to establish eye contact with you to convey love and attachment, trust and affection. When your dog looks at you with such love, their brain releases a chemical known as oxytocin. It's the same hormone that helps new mothers bond with their babies. Your brain does the same thing and when you exchange looks with your dog, it is literally raining love. Hmm. Dogs show love by sharing their toys with you. What is mine is also yours. I love sharing all my toys with you. The best way to say I love you is by caring and sharing, right? When dogs bring their favorite toys to you, they are explicitly saying just that. However, dogs can go a step further to display their love for you, which you may or may not approve. They will present you with dead rodents or birds they may have killed or found in the yard. Dogs also show love by bringing you their broken toys. They trust you enough to share them with you, knowing that you will fix them. Dogs show love by rubbing their face on you and nose nudging you. When dogs rub their face on yours, it's a sign displaying affection. They are marking you as theirs and saying that you belong to them. Similarly, nose nudging is your dog's way of saying, I love you. It could also mean they want attention. 
But if it is complemented with deep eye contact or more body hugs, it is definitely a show of love. Dogs roll over to show love. Any animal, including a dog, is most vulnerable when lying on its back with the belly exposed. But when a dog rolls onto his back and asks you for a belly rub, he has not only earned your trust and affection, but he is saying, I love you. When your dog turns over and wags his tail, he is relaxed. He is telling you in no uncertain way that he is yours and he loves you. Giving him attention at such a time will ensure a strong bond between you and your dog. These are some of the ways dogs show their humans how much they love them, trust them, and how devoted and loyal they are. How does your dog show you love? 10 Things Cats Like To Do 10 Things Cats Love To Do What is your cat's favorite thing to do? Cats are very special animals, smart and responsive. They have likes and dislikes, just like we humans do. They love tasty food, toys to play with, long naps, basking in the sun, and looking their best, among other things. Let's watch 10 things that cats love to do the most. Subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on our latest videos. You curious? Discover more, know more. Cats love grooming themselves. Cats spend a lot of time grooming themselves. In fact, they spend half of their waking hours trying their best to look clean and dapper. So why are cats so obsessive about grooming? Cats indulge in grooming to keep clean. By licking themselves, cats get rid of the dirt collected on their coats. It removes any scent they may have absorbed, which prevents predators from identifying them. It also helps to spread the natural oils produced by the skin and fur, allowing the coat to look healthy, shiny, and hydrated. Grooming is akin to a massage. It helps to calm them down, relax, and unwind. Besides that, it also acts as a coolant. Cats dampen their bodies with saliva to cool off on very hot days. Interesting, isn't it? Like a whole beauty parlor in one stroke. Or should I say, lick. Cats love to sleep. One activity that occupies most of a cat's time is sleep. Our four-legged furry feline can sleep 16 to 18 hours a day. Wow! Don't you wish you were a cat? Well, originally, wild cats slept for long hours so that they could conserve their energy to hunt, chase, and kill for their meal. Our house cats, who although have no need to hunt for their meals, are content to carry on this tradition of sleeping long hours. Sleeping also helps to regulate body temperature and, of course, provides a great deal of contentment and pleasure. Often, cat owners are tempted to wake up their feline friends to play with them or spend time with them. However, it is believed that it is best to let sleeping cats sleep and not interrupt their nap time, especially if they are young. Not only do they need their rest, but continually interrupted sleep could lead to stress in felines, and we certainly don't want that. Cats love watching birds. Cats love to look out of windows and watch birds flying. Whether cats love to watch birds because they're prey or because the motion of birds flying is mesmerizing, cats can spend hours observing birds every day. Besides bird watching in real life, cats also enjoy bird watching in real life. Put on a video of birds and you will see your cat transfixed on the sounds, shadows, and movements on the television screen. Switching off your screen might get you scratched or pawed at, so better watch out. Have you ever suffered the wrath of your cat's irritation? Cats love fresh and nutritious food. Cats love food. They love it so much that often cats will eat the meals that they enjoy, even if they're not hungry. Hunger stimulates the appetite centers in the brain, causing cats to eat and often overeat. Cats associate food intake with reduced stress, pleasure, and more simply, liking the taste of a certain food. Moreover, cats are quite fastidious. They love fresh and nutritious food and will not eat stale or spoiled food. The best way to ensure your cat's happiness and health is to vary their diet a little on a regular basis by introducing small treats into their normal routine or preparing some wholesome home-cooked meals. Hope you enjoy being creative in the kitchen. What is your cat's favorite dish? Cats love to play. Playtime is serious. Yes, surprisingly, not all their time is spent napping and eating. They enjoy playing with other cats, pets, or with you. 
as well as their toys or any object that tickles their fancy. Actually, it doesn't take much to keep a cat entertained. He will play with anything from string and feather to stuffed toys and laser lights. Playtime for cats is crucial for their health and development. Toys that reflect light like laser lights or appear to change color are particularly attractive. Cats also love toys with different textures, especially those that are the size of their normal prey, such as mice. They love scratching posts and squeaky toys, but very loud ones can frighten them. Toys are important for cats as they keep them mentally engaged, physically active, as well as happy and entertained. Cats truly are quite self-sufficient. Cats love running water. Do you often find your cat at the sink trying to drink from the faucet instead of his bowl? That's a very cat trait indeed. Running streams of water seem to captivate our feline friends, perhaps because they're more natural than standing water left in a bowl. There are many water fountains designed especially for cats that provide them the feeling of having cool, fresh, and tasty running water all the time. Moreover, the motion of free-falling water is also attractive for the cat, who will often paw at the water or try to splash in it. Has your cat got his own water fountain? Cats love scratching and clawing. Scratching and clawing are the most basic instincts of cats. They sharpen their claws by scratching and clawing and also mark their territory, keeping away potential competitors. It helps to relax and rejuvenate them as well as bring joy. They tend to use different surfaces, such as wooden floors, jute mats, carpets, as well as upholstered furniture to carry out this activity. How many sofas has your cat ruined in your house? To avoid your home from being destroyed, it is better to invest in one or more solid scratching posts that you can keep around the house. Cat scratching can be compared to the long stretch we humans do when our muscles are tired and aching. Similarly, a scratch session by our feline friend on the scratching post can eliminate their tiredness immediately. Cats love warm places and sunbathing. Cats love warm places, which makes sunbathing one of their most pleasurable activities. If a cat is likely to sit often in the garden, then a comfortable cat bed where he can take in the joy of sunbathing in relative peace and quiet would be a good bet. On the other hand, for a house cat, his best place is at the window with the blinds and curtains up so that he can enjoy the warmth of the sun filtering through. They also enjoy sitting curled up in other warm areas like your computer, refrigerator, or deep into a cardboard box. Our cats are always on a summer holiday, aren't they? Cats love being petted. If you have never owned a cat before, this will definitely surprise you. Cats, as one is normally prone to believe, are aloof touch-me-nots. But contrary to this belief, cats do like to receive affection as they enjoy the time they spend with their human. They like being pampered and caressed, especially on the back, chin, and ears. Typically, cats do not like being petted on the belly as it is a spot indicating vulnerability. They will, however, allow it only if they feel a lot of confidence towards the person petting them. Paws are a complete no-no, as they hate being tickled there. Of course, at the same time, there are some cats who are annoyed by any extra physical attention paid to them. It is best to leave them be. Not only will they get irritated and stressed out, but can also scratch and bite you. We don't want that. What does your cat like? Cats love to observe the world perched high up. Cats love watching the hustle and bustle of the world outside. They can stare out of windows and doors endlessly observing people, objects, insects, birds, and so on. More so, they love to do this while perched in high places. Tall lamps, curtain rods, jutting out ceiling fan blades, and so on offer them the perfect solace. Although this was a typical wildcat trait, it has been inherited by the house cat as well. Outdoor cats enjoy sitting up in trees, while for the ones indoors, a multi-level perch lookout is an ideal post. What does your cat love to do the most? Does he like to be petted? Does he like to sunbathe? Is he aloof or does he want attention? 10 things we do that annoy our cats. Do you remember the last time you moved your sleeping cat and he was so annoyed that he scratched you? Well, cats can be cute and cuddly, weird and quirky. Cats also have some very specific likes and dislikes. They love basking in the sun, playing with the feathers on your dream catcher, sleeping in the day and prowling at night. 
While they do make adorable pets, their I am God complex and catitude can drive us all mad. Today we're going to discuss 10 things that we humans do that drive our furry feline friends mad. Subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on our latest videos. You curious? Discover more, know more. 1. Moving a cat. Are you afraid of changing your position whilst sleeping at night so as not to disturb your cat, who has placed himself firmly on top of your blanket? Are you taking an early break from work because your cat is sleeping on your laptop and you dare not awaken him? Well, as you know, catnapping is a favourite pastime of all cats, and typically they don't care where and how they sleep. But if you dare to move them, you are definitely going to see a very annoyed animal ready to meow and claw at you. 2. Holding the tail of a cat A cat's tail is very tempting to hold, especially for children, who think it is entertaining. But the one thing that peeves cats a lot is someone pulling or holding their tail. If they trust you, they might let you tickle their chin and stroke their back. But if they do not like the interaction, you will instantly see dilated pupils, a fast twitching tail, and growling sounds. 3. Attention too much, a lack of, and incorrect. Well, one would think that giving our furry feline friends some attention would be nice. Honestly though, we are damned if we do and damned if we don't. While cats can be very lovable, they're quite particular about how and when they like to be petted. Some needy cats will demand their human's attention all the time. Most just want to be left alone, and for others, the wrong type of attention can be annoying. Pet me on my belly and I will claw you. Rub my head and I will adore you. <laughs> there is no winning with cats, is there? 4. Baths. Water? Shower? Bath? Forget it! Try and take me! I will scratch you and meow till the feline police are here! When it comes to baths, it certainly does not picture in the list of to-do things for cats at all. Having said that, cats are fastidiously clean creatures, but they do not need humans to give them a bath. They use their tongues to clean themselves, and they do a fine good job of it too. Have you tried giving your cat a bath? 5. Loud noises Cats like peace and quiet. Any loud noise that disturbs their catnaps is likely to annoy them. Remember the last time you dropped the metal pan in the kitchen and your kitty jumped straight up onto the refrigerator? Well, it's no surprise. Cats intensely dislike all loud sounds, including fireworks, thunderstorms, and construction sounds. It can scare and confuse them. What does your cat do when he hears loud sounds? 6. Other cats and dogs While many cats are amiable enough and will get along with their mates, be it cats or dogs, there are the exceptions, the unfriendly ones. They can get jealous and territorial. If there are other cats in the house, it is better to keep them apart as well as have different beds, litter boxes, and bowls for each. As far as dogs are concerned, cats dislike the constant attention and curiosity our canine friends show. Dogs show their interest by wanting to lick and chase cats, and even eating cat food. What could be more annoying than this for our feline friends who only want their space? How does your cat behave with other cats and dogs? 7. Car rides and cat carriers The one thing that dogs love and cats abhor is car rides. Cats love being home. They are the kings of their domain, and suffering a car ride is not something they enjoy. Moreover, getting out of their safe haven means that they have to get into a cat carrier. What can be more constricting to a free soul than being holed up in a cage? More so, being put in a carrier could also mean a visit to the vet trouble just seems to pile up. Better to stay at home than go for a ride, as all roads lead to disaster. 8. Change Like most pets, and perhaps many of us as well, cats dislike change. They are creatures of habit and like their routine. Moving places, shifting homes, changing owners, presence of a new member into the family, all of this can be stressful for cats. More so, if you were to change the cat's litter box or his food, it could annoy your cat to no end. Stick to routine, stick to what your cat is comfortable with, and you will have a happy kitty with you always. 9. Strong smells 
Cats have a powerful sense of smell. It is as much as 14 times more sensitive than that of humans. Remember the air freshener that you sprayed in your bathroom and your cat hightailed out of there in a matter of seconds? Well, for cats, anything with a strong smell or odour can be unpleasant and annoying. Have you given up all your strong fragrances for the sake of your beloved cat? 10. Clothes It is fun to dress up. In fact, we humans love it. Halloween, Christmas, costume parties or simply a party night out in our besties. But in our misplaced enthusiasm, we try to dress up our cats. And for them, it is a totally off-putting experience. Cats love the natural fur God has gifted them with and want nothing to do with human clothing. These were some of the pet peeves of our four-legged furry feline friends. What makes your cat annoyed with you? Did any of these telltale signs ring true with you? 10 things we do that annoy our dogs. Did you know that our pet pooches get annoyed with some of the things we do to them? Dogs are man's best friends. They are loyal and will go to the ends of the earth for their humans. But they have emotions too, which they may not be able to express as clearly as we do. They feel happy, satisfied, annoyed, and angry. Today, we are going to discuss 10 things humans tend to irritate, stress out, and confuse our dogs. Keep watching this video on You Curious? to see the 10 things we humans do that peeve our canine friends. Subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on our latest videos. You curious? Discover more, know more. Hugging. You love your dog and are constantly showing affection by hugging and cuddling him. While he may tolerate your hug because you are his human, remember that your dog does not particularly care for those arms being wrapped around his body. The squeeze makes him uncomfortable, and this is even more so for strangers or children who try to hug him. This is because, unlike us, canines do not have a history of grasping their fellow dogs as a means of affection. Instead, they consider it a threat. Rather than trust and friendship for a dog, laying a paw or a foreleg on another dog is an act of dominance or control. So unless your dog enjoys an occasional hug, it is better to opt for a gentle pet instead. Staring hard and long at a dog. Staring long and hard into a dog's eyes might be perceived as a threat by the dog. For example, have you noticed your dog when he spotted a squirrel? His eyes are doggedly fixed on his prey, and this is definitely not friendly. For canines, staring is a challenge. While it may be all right to look into your own pooch's eyes, though he may not absolutely love it, never stare at a strange dog who seems anxious or nervous. It could lead to aggravated behavior. You can look into a dog's eyes for a few seconds, but after that, it's better you turn your gaze away. Have you ever stared into a dog's eyes and seen him getting annoyed? Shouting and yelling. When your dog misbehaves, your first reaction is to shout at him. But this is the worst solution to correcting bad behavior. Shouting or yelling confuses and agitates dogs. For them, shouts are similar to angry barking and mean trouble. Just like us humans, they do not like harsh punishment or being spanked. They may not understand the words uttered, but they will likely perceive the emotion. A negative environment will scare them and set them off barking. For dogs, fear is not synonymous with respect, and after a point, continued harshness will desensitize them. They will continue doing what they want, irrespective of what you say. As a training technique for bad behavior, stay calm and adjust vocal tones to indicate encouragement instead of raising your voice. Leaving dogs alone for long. Dogs live in packs. They are social creatures and do not like being left alone. For them, their pack consists of you and others in your family. If a dog is left alone at home, in the backyard or garden for hours at a time, they can develop behavioral and psychological issues. Besides separation anxiety, they can exhibit destructive behavior and even try to escape. They might forego all the training they've received and trash the house as a sign of protest. Dogs need to be with their humans or at least spend a fair amount of time with them. If you are working long hours, make sure that there is someone who can take your dog for a walk or check in on him. Give him fresh food and water. Once you come home, make sure you spend quality time with your dog. Go for walks, play with him, and provide him with mental and physical stimulation. While dogs like a little me time, 
Don't leave them for too long without company. Tell us about a time you left your pooch alone and found the house in a mess when you returned. Changes in routine. Dogs are like children. They need discipline. They need a routine. They need rules, even if they don't like them. The moment you go off track, be it their food, walk, play, or sleep schedule, dogs tend to get annoyed. Once you start a routine, it gets ingrained into their heads, and they expect the same to be followed daily. If you were to change the dog's sleep time, stay out late, delay a meal, or go for a walk two hours before his usual time, it could stress your dog out and cause behavioral issues. Stick to the schedule as best you can. Routines make the dog's life more predictable, keeps him confident and satisfied. I guess you need to be disciplined to make sure your dog is too, isn't it? Not allowing them to sniff and explore while walking. Dogs love their walks and exploring their surroundings. They explore primarily by sniffing. We perceive our world using our sight. Dogs do it using their keen sense of scent. When you rush your dog through his walk without stopping to let him sniff, it will surely annoy him. By sniffing his surroundings, he is not only marking his territory and checking out the messages other dogs have left behind, but also getting a chance to understand the world around him. Loosen the lead. Allow him to sniff and soak in the pleasure of his walk and environment. Overpowering fragrances. Dogs have a heightened sense of smell. In fact, it is about 10,000 to 100,000 times more sensitive than that of humans. They enjoy taking in all kinds of odors and smells, especially when they're walking. But strong smells and chemicals tend to irritate dogs' noses and make them uncomfortable. They may get annoyed when anything is sprayed in their faces, even when you're applying perfume or hairspray or freshening up the room with air fresheners. Make sure it is sprayed away from your dog. Forcing them to do things against their will. Often, you'll find your dog refusing to cooperate, whether it's a trip to the vet, going into the bathroom to have a bath, or turning down a particular street to walk. He'll simply put the brakes on, unwilling to obey your command. If this is the case, your dog is trying to tell you something. He's either avoiding a situation that has previously scared him or has developed a phobia for it. At such times, avoid forcing him into that situation as it will stress him out. It will cause more harm than good. Instead, ease your dog into the situation. Keep him at a safe distance, show him your support, Encourage him to stay calm and reward him for good behavior. Take baby steps to expand his exposure and keep rewarding him for every brave paw that he takes forward. Is your dog afraid of something? Tell us in the comments below. Dogs are annoyed when their sleep is interrupted. Just as we get a jolt when rudely awakened out of our sleep, dogs too get annoyed when their sleep is interrupted. Anything that disturbs a sleeping dog, like a loud noise or a vigorous pat on the head, can vex them. It is best to allow your dog to wake up on his own, naturally, without touching him or sneaking up on him. Older dogs who sleep more deeply than younger ones may get frightened by the sudden presence of a person trying to wake them up. Children should also be instructed not to wake up sleeping dogs. If you need to wake up your dog, do it gently and quietly. How does your dog sleep? Share your pooch's sleep patterns with us. Being upset can upset your dog. We all have good days and bad days. Naturally, with hectic schedules and work stress, we cannot be happy all the time. However, our canine friends are quite perceptive and can sense our mood changes instantly. If we are happy, they are happy with us. But if we are stressed, anxious, or depressed, our dogs will also manifest some of that mood. They may even match that mood and fall sick themselves. Some may get annoyed and exhibit behavioral problems, perhaps because they're not getting the usual amount of attention or being deprived of their walks and stimulation. Or, more likely, they are empathizing with you. Ensure that you have a routine with your dog. After all, dogs offer the best emotional support and can be the therapy you need to get out of your blues. It is important to try and understand our canine friends. Be considerate of their feelings and give them the love and attention they deserve. Do you know of any particular behavior that vexes your dog? 10 Things Dogs Love To Do How well do you know your dog? Are you aware of all that he loves and wants? I'm sure you think that playing with him, petting him, and going for long runs on the beach is enough to satisfy him. That is not always true. Very much like us, 
our four-legged furry friends also have their own likes, pet peeves and activities they enjoy more than others. Their satisfaction and discontent both are based on social preferences, nature and instinct. Let's watch this video to better understand our beloved pooches and the 10 things they love to do. Before we start, click on the bell icon and subscribe to You Curious. Discover more, know more. 1. Dogs like to be by your side always. You often hear owners say, My dog is always by my side. He does not leave me for even one moment. He even follows me to the bathroom. Staying close to you is one of the common behaviours exhibited by a dog. It is his way of saying he loves you. It is a social, emotional, biological trait, indicating protection on the part of the dog. Just as you provide them security and comfort, by being with you, they are providing a barrier against intruders by saying, Step back! This human is mine! I am here to love him and protect him! It also signifies that you are a rather valued member of his pack. Being in a pack means being together, always. That is why when you return from somewhere, whether it's a long holiday or a weekend break, from work at the end of the day, or simply the supermarket after only one hour, they're excited and happy to see you. They welcome you with wags and jigs, barks and hugs. Their pack is complete and they feel safe again. Does your dog follow you around everywhere you go? 2. Dogs love taking your sweaty clothes in their mouth. Do you remember how embarrassed you were when your pooch picked up your dirty lingerie in his mouth and flaunted it to your party guests? And he will keep doing this with your socks, underwear, sweatshirts and so on. Well, what do you tell someone whose favourite smell in the whole world is you? And anything that has your body odour on it is the ultimate possession. Dogs have a very powerful nose and scent receptors and can smell 10,000 to 100,000 times better than us. What item of clothing from your wardrobe does your dog like the best? If your dog suffers from anxiety from being left alone or staying at a kennel, give him a piece of well-worn clothing belonging to you. It will lift his mood instantly. 3. Dogs love toys that have been given to them and are exclusively theirs. Just like we humans are possessive about our things, so are our four-legged friends. They love the things that have been given to them and exclusively belong to them. This includes their toys, chewy bones, food bowls, dog beds and so on. Most canines carry their favourite stuffed toy or ball in their mouth at all times. It means that the item has value for them and by carrying it around, they are protecting it. It is the possession that brings them comfort and joy. It could be the taste, smell or texture they enjoy or some other special attribute. Whatever it is, it helps them relax. However, if one day your pooch decides to claim one of your belongings as his own, like a pair of slippers, which he unrelentingly holds trapped in his jaw, then he may be trying to tell you something. Perhaps it's a call for attention, love, or the need for more toys. Does your pooch have a favourite toy? 4. Dogs love a challenge. Dogs love to be stimulated. They love a challenge, be it mental or physical. The foremost sign of a dog getting bored is a show of behavioural problems, like gnawing at the furniture, chewing your slippers, upsetting the trash can, eating toilet paper and so on. Dog toys and hard chewy sticks serve to be a fun challenge for a bored mind. You can also get them interactive food puzzles or a Kong toy. Games like hide and seek, tug of war and fetch will also do the trick, depending on the size and breed of your dog. Giving a treat as a reward after they have achieved their goal will keep them motivated, interested and stimulated. It helps the pooches expend their excess energy while unfurling the mystery behind the puzzle or toy making them feel less stressed and more active. If they are not engaged enough with what you are offering, then try some agility training, search and rescue training or even obedience classes. It will keep their mind and body productively occupied. How often do you take your dog for fun training sessions? 5. Dogs love socialising with other dogs. Not only do dogs enjoy socialising with other dogs, but it is important for their well-being as well. Naturally, it is fun for the dog to meet with his canine friends, very much like how we enjoy meeting with our friends. It allows them to put into practice some of the skills they are born with. Survival skills like communication, fighting and hunting are what they use in the wild 
and similarly in encounters with other dogs in the domestic scene as well. And as much as they love their humans, these skills are best wetted while meeting other fellow dogs. It is also a time when dogs are able to use all their senses to the fullest. For example, they use their powerful noses to smell out exciting scents, their incredible sense of hearing to pick up new sounds, and their keen vision to seek out friends. Socialization also encourages the dogs to run and play, jump and wrestle, exercises that are crucial for good physical and mental health. Don't you wish your gym allowed dogs? Six, dogs love checking their pee mail. Dogs love sniffing everything, especially the smelly, dirty things in and around the neighborhood while walking. Pipes, bushes, manholes, the list is endless. You should allow them to sniff around, as what they are doing is checking their mail, pee mail to be more precise. They are getting themselves acquainted with what's happening in the neighborhood, creatures that may be new to the locality, or old ones that may have passed by and left their scent. For us humans, we see the world with our eyes. With dogs, their strongest organ is their nose, and they see and perceive the world best with it. While on a walk, give them time to sniff and soak in the pulse of their surroundings. Seven, dogs love the water. Most dogs love the water. They will not think twice before jumping into the pool, lake, or any body of water, including a muddy puddle. Swimming is an activity that most of them enjoy. And my, what a pleasure it is to see a dog paddling away in the water as if he has no care in the world. Also, they seem to have an amazing ability to swim. It does not take them days of training like us to learn swimming. They are natural water babies and learn to keep afloat once inside the water. Besides walking, for most dogs, swimming is a great exercise that is fun and enjoyable. Just like us, it helps keep them fit and in shape. More importantly, being in the pool with your furry friend is a good way to spend time together. It is also a perfect way to cool off in the hot summer months, when the fluffier dogs suffer the wrath of the heat the most. When was the last time you enjoyed a swim with your pooch? Eight, dogs love traveling and the great outdoors. Dogs love traveling and will happily accompany their humans wherever they go. They want to feel included in your plans and hence are happy to be taken everywhere. As a show of solidarity, they will jump into your suitcase making sure that you don't leave them out. Most domesticated dogs don't think of themselves as dogs. They feel like they are part of the family they live with and thus deserve the same privileges as the rest. Also, dogs are at their best in the great outdoors. Their ancestors have always lived in nature, free and wild, and perhaps that's why being outdoors suits them and serves to energize them. No matter how comfortable their home is, the thrill of different tastes, scents, and sounds in nature is unparalleled, and that is what they look forward to. More importantly, being outside is their time to play, walk, run, get some exercise, and of course, spend time with their best friend. I bet you're already planning your next hiking holiday with your dog. Nine, dogs love sleeping with you. Sleeping with their humans is something all dogs love. Curling up on the bed with their best friend not only represents the best time of their day, but perhaps the best time of their life. They feel comfortable, secure, and privileged to be part of your world. The fact that you're allowing them in your personal space is like heaven for them. While it should not become a habit, make sure you keep your door open at night so that they have access to you and do not feel isolated, alone, or neglected. If not on your bed, then at least give a space for them in your room. 10. Dogs love being productive and useful. Just like dogs in the wild who have a sense of purpose, be it hunting for meals, protecting their pack, or raising their young ones, domesticated dogs too have a natural instinct for accomplishing tasks. They are always looking for something to do, like retrieving a ball, finding a newspaper, closing the door, or picking up the laundry. It makes them feel valued. Anything that helps them feel recognized is good for them. Doing nothing, on the other hand, can make them feel bored, restless and depressed. There is nothing more important for a dog than making his human companion happy. What does your dog love to do the most? Which of the activities in the video has your dog indulged in? 10 ways cats show love. How do cats tell us they love us? Have you ever wondered why your friend's dog runs to greet her wagging his tail and your pet cat hardly stirs when you walk in? 
Well, sadly, our four-legged furry feline friends have earned the reputation of being unfriendly and unsociable. But in reality, that is not the case at all. Cats do love and appreciate their owners, they just don't make it as obvious. Cats are very lovable and have their own unique ways to tell you they love you. At You Curious, we will talk about the 10 ways cats show us love. Before you start, don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. 1. Cats show love by shared grooming. Cats love to groom themselves. They keep themselves clean by licking their entire body. The cat's tongue is quite powerful and is used for a lot of things. Shared grooming for cats is extremely important. If your cat is licking you, then she wants your attention and is asking you to pet her. Moreover, by licking you, your cat is spreading her scent and marking you as a valued member of her feline family. It could also mean that she is trying to lick you clean, which is her way to bond with you. As one of the cat's favourite activities, grooming shows that your cat is calm and comfortable being with you. When was the last time your cat groomed you? 2. Cats show love by biting and nibbling. Kittens bite and nibble each other as a sign of playfulness and fun. Once grown up, cats tend to nibble their humans. They're not trying to harm you, as one might be prone to believe. It is rather a show of affection by the cat towards its human. A playful bite is a sign that your cat adores you and you truly are her favourite person. They might nibble your hand when you're petting them to say, don't stop, or on your calf while walking beside you to say, I'm here with you and I love you. 3. Cats show love by making eye contact. A cat's body language can mean all sorts of things. How would you know if she's happy around you and that you're a source of comfort for her? Most cats will not look directly into the eyes of a stranger. They find it threatening. But if your cat is happy to look into your eyes and also slowly blink while staring at you, you can be sure that your cat loves you. So don't be surprised if you find your cat staring at you. She's communicating with you, showing you affection and saying that she has accepted you into her life. Eye contact for cats is important, almost equal to a human kiss. Isn't that interesting? 4. Cats show love by headbutting and rubbing against you. Has your cat ever curled up against your leg or butted her head against yours? Cats mark their territory using the scent glands on their cheeks and head, which emit pheromones. Headbutting and rubbing symbolize closeness. Your cat is saying she loves you and that you are hers. She is not only telling you, but also the whole world that you are her human. Another place cats have scent glands is their paws. So, when cats caress you with their paws, they're not only emitting pheromones onto you, but also reinforcing their relationship with you. Don't you just love a headbutt with your cat? 5. Cats show love by giving you generous gifts. One way cats show their affection is by bringing you gifts. Besides their favourite toys, which they want to share with you, they will sometimes bring you dead rodents. They take on the role of a teacher, and just like they would teach their young ones to hunt, they take you under their wing as part of their feline family. Gifting their prey to you is equivalent to a gift of a bouquet of roses or a box of chocolates. In the wild, cats spend a lot of time hunting, and they share their prey with only those they feel affectionate towards. So if your cat presents you a dead rat, she is saying, I love you and I have made you dinner. What has your cat gifted you lately? 6. Cats show love with their tails Just like we hold hands as a sign of love, cats will wrap their tail around their favourite humans as the ultimate sign of love and trust. The position of a cat's tail is a good sign of how she is feeling, and a way to understand her better. If the tail is held high with a slight curve on the top and a gentle sway, it is her way of saying that she likes you, she is comfortable around you, and wants to be friends with you. 7. Cats show love by meowing and purring. Cats meow and purr to interact with people rather than their own feline friends. Just like humans, cats will rarely meow or purr with anyone they do not like. It is often difficult to understand what cats mean when they meow or purr. Is it that they are hungry or in pain or simply want to be left alone? But if they continue to do so even after they have been well looked after and well fed, then they are literally talking to you and communicating their love. 
Cat's purrs are therapeutic and healing, and nothing shouts out love and contentment like a cat curled up in your lap, purring. 8. Cats show love by kneading. Kneading is an action where cats punch their paws gently in and out on a soft surface, such as your lap or stomach. Kittens learn this with their mother when they are nursing, but for older cats, kneading is a way of showing that they need you and that they have accepted you as a part of their feline family. Cats will only do this with those humans who they want to show love to. How often does your cat need you? 9. Cats show love by sleeping on you and being near you while you are sick. One important sign of a cat's affection towards you is when she is comfortable to snooze on your lap. Cats, like most animals and the feline species, feel vulnerable when they are sleeping. But if they have chosen to sleep on you, they are putting down their defences and saying they have faith in you. A cat sleeping on your lap is the best compliment you can have. Further, if a cat exposes her belly to you, she is saying she feels protected and trusts you. Moreover, they will always be around when you are sick. It is their way of saying, I love you, I will stay close to you and comfort you until you feel better. 10. Cats show love by presenting their butts to you. Contrary to popular belief, cats love to show their butts to those who they trust and love. It is not in any way a sign of rejection. Cats identify each other by scent, and so sniffing one another's behinds is almost like a very hearty and personal handshake. I know you, I trust you, and you are my friend. If cats are always showing you their rears, it means that they are comfortable with you and that you are their favourite human. How often do you wake up in the morning to find your cat's butt in your face? These are some unique ways that cats show us love. Bizarre hybrid animals. Have you ever wondered what the offspring of a giraffe and elephant would look like? As strange as it may sound, there are a couple of hybrids in the animal kingdom that are technically separate species, yet genetically similar enough to be able to breed together. Welcome to You Curious, and here are the top five bizarre animal hybrids. Number five, the mule. You've probably heard of a mule, but did you know that a mule is actually the offspring of a female horse and a male donkey? That's right, it's our first animal hybrid. If you look at a mule, you might mistake it for a donkey. They are very similar. They're bred domestically due to their increased patience, their hardness, and the longevity compared to their horse mothers and more intelligent than their donkey dads. Number four, the wolf dog. <coughs> Dogs, and particularly grey wolves, are genetically incredibly close. These wolf dogs are actually very common, and they date back at least 10,000 years, when they were first used in the hunting of woolly mammoths. Many popular dog breeds today, including the German Shepherd, had wolf dogs used in their evolution, and wolf dogs, because they're easier to train than wild wolves, are often used in film and TV to portray their wolf ancestors. Number 3. The Savannah Cat this exotic-looking animal species is a cross between an average domestic cat and a serval, which is a mid-sized wild African cat. Despite looking like a wild species, the savannah cat is in fact considered a domestic cat, with kittens available for sale all over the world. Number 2. The Wolfin This entry on our list is incredibly rare. A wolfin is the offspring of a female bottlenose dolphin and a male false killer whale. Now, what, I hear you ask, is a false killer whale? Well, a false killer whale is technically a member of the dolphin family and shares a lot of characteristics with the more commonly known killer whale or orca. Number one, the liger. At number one on our list, it's quite literally the big one, the largest big cat in the world. The liger is an offspring between a male lion and a female tiger. Get a load of this guy. Hercules the Liger is officially recognised as the largest cat in the world, weighing in at an incredible 922 pounds. The breeding of ligers is somewhat controversial, as these have never existed in the wild, due to the fact that lions and tigers don't share a habitat. In fact, they exist on completely separate continents. So there we are, the top five greatest animal hybrids. Biggest animals. Elephants, whales, rhinos, 
giant sea cucumbers. There are some really big animals on our planet for sure, and sadly many of them are now endangered by poaching and our changing environment. However, there used to be many other animals roaming our planet throughout history, so today let's have a look at some of the biggest animals of all time. Let's start with the Elasmosaurus. An Elasmosaurus from the late Cretaceous period, around 18 million years ago, was the largest plesiosaur at roughly 14 meters from head to tail. It weighed about three tons, and as an underwater predator, it mostly fed on small fish and squid. Paleoloxodon nomadicus. This giant elephant lived in Asia during the Pliocene era and died out about 24,000 years ago. Various bones have been found for this animal, suggesting a size of up to 5.2 meters tall at the shoulder and a weight of up to 22 tons. The Mosasaurus. Dipping back into the ocean, let's have a look at the Mosasaurus, the largest of the Mosasaur family, which grew over 15 meters long and weighed over 15 tons. They were deadly and they were the apex predator of the oceans before sharks took over. The Chronosaurus. This is another seafaring dinosaur as the biggest of the pliosaurs. Chronosaurus was named after the Greek god Cronus, who ate his own children. Living in the late Cretaceous period, this beast dominated the waters and ate absolutely anything it came across. And similarly to the Lyplurodon, it weighed around 15 tons and reached up to 17 meters long. Indracotherium. Returning to land now, this is probably the largest mammal ever to have lived, around 20 million years ago. Indracotherium is a distant relative of the rhinoceros, though of course it doesn't share its sharp horns, and weighed an estimated 30 tons, more than four times the weight of a modern elephant. It had a long neck and legs, much like a giraffe, allowing it to feed from the highest branches of the trees. Glyptodon. Now this weird looking animal is clearly a relative of the armadillo and also looks a lot like a turtle, except this guy grew to the size of a car and they were alive as recently as 10,000 years ago. They relied on their thick armor and sharp claws for defense, weighing around two tons and they're also vegetarians. Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus again lived in the late Cretaceous period, which seems to be a pretty good time for these giant creatures, and had wingspans between 10 and 11 meters long, the same size as a small aircraft. It's believed it could walk on folded wings and scavenge for food on the ground. Spinosaurus. Now you may have seen Spinosaurus in the film Jurassic Park 3, actually not that bad. And if you have, you'll know that it was a formidable creature, weighing in around 8 tons and growing up to 55 feet long. It's the largest carnivore to ever have existed around 100 million years ago, and had long, fierce, crocodile-like jaws. However, if you want the biggest dinosaur, that would be Argentinosaurus, who lived right up until the end of the dinosaur age 65 million years ago. They grew up to 120 feet long and weighed an incredible 100 tons. Amazing, really, for a creature that survived entirely by eating plants. Shastasaurus. These were the biggest of the ichthyosaurs, or fish lizards, and were essentially massive dolphin-like creatures, which dominated the oceans of the Mesozoic era. They could weigh a huge 75 tons, and they were the largest known marine reptile. Megatherium. Now, this was a variety of elephant-sized ground sloths that lived in South America as recently as 12,000 years ago. They could weigh up to four tons and measured six meters from head to tail. When it was alive, it would have been smaller only than mammoths, and would have used its strong tail, along with its hind legs, to create a sort of tripod, allowing it to reach much higher up to food on tall trees. And of course, we couldn't do this video without including the very famous blue whale, the largest creature to have ever existed. The amazing blue whale grows to almost 100 feet long, longer than a basketball court, and can weigh a stupendous 180 tons, the same as eight DC-9 airplanes. Its tongue alone weighs over one and a half tons, and its heart is the size of a mini cooper. They feed on tiny shrimp-like animals called krill, and have to eat one and a half million calories every day to stay alive. And always remember, a blue whale is not a fish, it's a mammal. So there you go, some great information about the largest animals ever to have existed. 